Now, have you guys watched the videos on yes. the on the website? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Helpful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we've gotten. I think since we started putting the videos up, we have like 120 of the videos, and they've been viewed close to 200,000 times now. So we have we do get a lot of people who see them and find them helpful. Okay, we do have somebody new this morning. Maybe we can get an introduction. We'll start and uh, say good morning to you. Yeah. And who's here with you this morning? This is uh, my friend Nita Sather. You can tell who you are. Um, good morning. I'm Nita Sather. I've known Joanne for many years, probably since 1979 or 80, somewhere around in that time. And she called you the other night and she said... She called me the other night and said, I need you, can you be there? <laughs> sure, why not? And so I'm here for her. And, uh, That's a good friend. You know, on the website. I've been on the website, I've checked out your website, because um, I'm, you know, it's a big step that she's taking. Good. She thought um, a little bit about mm -hmm. it. You're not just here to drink and gamble. No, no okay, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a gambler. I'll drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a gambler. <laughs> I'll drink. <laughs> yeah, but I actually have a couple of um, friends who have had um, gastric bypasses of one nature or the other. But and I was going to check exactly what kind before I came because one of them just had her surgery the end of December mm -hmm. and um, was back to work within a very short period of time and. She's very slowly shrinking before our eyes and, Great. you know, gone through and done a little, having a little sip of soup while you watch her, you know. So um, it, I know that it's a successful surgery because I've right. seen evidence of it. Um, and this sounds like it's a, a good option, the, the one that... Good. You're very kind to be here with her and we appreciate it. So. Thank you. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm supposed to go to Flathead Lake? Yeah, Flathead Lake. Okay. Where's the guy? Oh, he's coming. He, he was there yesterday. It's one of the most beautiful yeah. places in the world. Is that right? Oh my God! Yeah. It is. There is. Yeah. It's hard to find any place any prettier. Yeah, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, do you guys have black flies? <laughs> oh, uh, on all flies black. <laughs> yeah. I know well, what you but mean. there's yeah. black flies. Yeah, the black flies you oh. know. Yeah, they're they the state are, bird uh, of Minnesota. No, no, <laughs> not yet. No. No, no they don't go across borders. There's mosquitoes, but nothing like nothing like those. The Minnesota lakes, you know, once yes. the thaw comes, there's a like a 15 minute period where it's really beautiful, and then the flies come, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you can't go, you can't go us, out. Yeah. Right? So flies wake up. Right. Yeah. Those you can, wow, this is great. The next day, so you go back indoors you know, right? <laughs> you until winter comes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, okay. Let's see. You went through clinic yesterday. Yes. And uh, you got to meet. One of our former patients, who is a, a fellow Montanan, yes, is that right? Yes, he lives here. But yeah. One of your fellow patients, and I think it was great meeting all of those people yesterday. You saw the, the staples come out, yeah. and uh, a few of them had fake cries of pain, but otherwise, yeah, <laughs> didn't seem to hurt. It's yeah. amazing to me. Good. It's amazing that that holds it all together. Those little staples. Yep. Yeah. Is that the same size staple that is on the? Inside? No, totally different. Uh, those are big kind of staples that are almost the size of what you use on your desk, what you saw on the skin yesterday. The mm -hmm. ones that are inside are about half the size of a sesame seed. And they're titanium, and they're very thin. And uh, when they're closed, they close into a B shape, and they stay there forever. So they're embedded in the collagen fiber scar tissue. So they're very tiny, um, very small, and uh, you can very difficult to ever see them again after they're embedded in the scar. Wow. So they don't set off all the alarms? No, that's through. right. Good question. In and you, out of the <coughs> you can have an MRI. <laughs> you don't have any steel in you. Uh -huh. The only metal is a non-ferrous metal. And so you remember from sixth grade science class, the ferrous metals are the magnet kind of metals like iron and steel, and titanium is non-ferrous. So you can go through the checker on the airport and you can have MRIs in the future and things like that. So it's a good question. A lot of people ask that. <coughs> what about, um, app? my friend called me, my birthday was Monday and she said, huh, she just called me, um, geez, Joe, you're 53 and you're three years past your colonoscopy date. So getting a colonoscopy after this, how long do you have to wait? <coughs> uh, I'd wait till you're out of the hospital at least. Just roll over while just I'm there tomorrow over. and I'll look Take at the, the other, other end. Side. <laughs> uh, no big deal about it. In fact, you're safer having your colonoscopy following the surgery than before. Yeah. 
You may remember that one of the last ladies we interviewed yesterday was a woman named Vicki Allen. <coughs> and she's a nurse up on the fourth floor. She's one of the first ones who's been paid for by the hospital insurance that now covers our surgery. And one of the things that we recognized in her is that when she came out of the surgery and we put an oxygen monitor on her during the night, her oxygen dropped. Now we didn't know this, she didn't know this, but she has some kind of lung disease from her obesity probably, which she was unaware of. And a lot of us have this general idea that life is fair. Like, if you're going to get a heart attack, God will first write you a letter ahead of time and warn you with some chest pain. You know, I just wanted to let you know your heart is getting sick, and I want to let you know ahead of time you should cut out the steak and cigarettes and before you die of your heart attack. But a lot of times he just comes and takes you back. And uh, in the same way, people who are obese die. And people who are obese are dying. They develop a variety of medical illnesses diabetes, heart disease, and lung disease is a primary one. And you may or may not know about that. So if you go and talk to a family member, they may say, oh, he snores like they're building a house next door. You know, and you don't think anything of it, but that is often a period of time during the night where your oxygen is dropping because the back of your jaw is going back and you're, you're called obstructing your airway and your oxygen is dropping. Well, that woman yesterday who volunteered that information was not that heavy. Now, if you give a woman like that some sedatives while you're doing a colonoscopy, and they already have a partial obstruction when they fall asleep, and you give them a little extra medicine, a lot of times the oxygen, oxygen can drop quite a bit. And if that happens, suddenly a routine colonoscopy can turn exciting. You really don't want an exciting no, colonoscopy. No, no. It's like a want. like a plane trip. You want a very boring plane <laughs> flight. You don't want any excitement during that flight. And so a colonoscopy is fine after the surgery. The new connections don't bother anything, don't cause any problems. But in fact, it makes your colonoscopy uh, much safer to have you thinner and healthier. 